Hello, hello, hello. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining Kava Ministries. We are glad that you're here. We are glad to see, well, to hear from you this evening and to be able, uh, just to be able to minister the word of God to you today. Today's third, I believe today is the 25th, 2024. Man, January is just about over. January is just about over. Well, again, we are glad that you are here to meet us this evening. Give yourself a hand clap. Yay, yes, yes, yes. We made it through another week. Tomorrow's Friday. And we're just thanking God for all of his many blessings. Amen. This is Kaba Ministries. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us um, on our Thursday evening podcast. We are going to be ending our series on the power of words, the power of words. That has been the series that we have been um, talking about and teaching about. I pray and hope that you have received and learned something from these uh, lessons that God has given us. Sometimes people want to know, where do you get these topics from? Where do you, you know, um, most of the time it, he's talking to you first. He deals with us directly. And so um, I humble myself before him when he when he sends correction, whether it's uh, through the Holy Spirit in prayer time or meditation, through his word or his preach word. Um, he will always send correction if we desire it. But we have to want it. We have to desire the correction. And we have to have a desire to want to please him uh, first, I should say, and then have a desire to um, be given correction. And in correction, it strengthens you. It, it, it allows you to develop a stronger and deeper relationship with God himself. So I thank God for that. Amen. Again, we're so glad that you've joined us this Thursday, Kava Ministries, to Today's topic is the power of words. We're ending our series and uh, we hope and pray that you have received something from um, the series on uh, last week, week before and this week. We're going to jump right into it. Um, John 6, 6, John 6, <laughs> uh, John 6, 63. That's what I'm trying to say. John 6, 63 says, these are the words that Jesus says, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Let me read that for you again. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. They are an invisible force because if we believe his word, whose word, God's word, they begin to work in us and in our lives because we use them. So let's separate the scripture. Jesus says, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So Jesus is even giving us an example here of how powerful words are. And not only are they powerful, but he says they give you, they are, they are, the words I speak to you are spirit. So they are his spirit. They're part of him. They are of, of spirit. That spirit agrees with our spirit when we're speaking those words. And they are life. So life means continually, just like the spirit of God is. Even when we leave here, the words that have been spoken in our spirit, um, I will probably continue to go on because we don't know um, what type of ministry we will receive on the other side. We we read about it, but we don't know the depth of it. But our spirits will have to agree with God's spirit in order for him to be able to communicate with us because he's a spirit. And so even in our earthly bodies right now, in our earthly vessels, he communicates with us and through us with his spirit, through his spirit, by his spirit. That's how he communicates with us. I want to read that again. Jesus says, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So he's not speaking just anything. 
They are purposeful. They are with intent. They are to give life and life more abundantly. Life with richness, life with purpose, words with richness, words with purpose, power, power. Well, what do we need to have powerful words for? So we, that we can experience this very scripture. So we can experience this very scripture so that we continue to be a living word, a living vessel. The words that he spoke, they are in, they are an invisible force and power. They are an invisible force and power because we believe them. If we believe them or if we believe his words, they begin to work in our lives because we use them. So the words that he that we speak are invisible unless you write them down, but they are invisible. Not only they're invisible, they're an invisible force. So that means they have, they can, they can push through, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They can push through uh, the spirit realm. They can push through and they can, they can, they can move through doors and walls. We may not be able to visibly see it, but it tells us that it is an invisible force and power. Be because if we believe his words, which we do, they begin to work in our lives because we use them. We use the words that he that he has spoken in us. We use the words um, that he has given us because we believe it. We believe his words. I know I believe Jesus's words. When I read the scriptures, those are his words being translated. Whether it's an experience that they translated or they translated what he said, what he spoke. But what he spoke had power and what he spoke had life and it's continual. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. moves mountains it can heal it can empower it can fortify you it can build you up it can give you joy because it has power mm. that's the true power of words that is the true power of words, of how it is supposed to be used. It is to bring forth life, not to speak death. It is to bring, it is to uplift you. How many of us would, this might be an odd, well, I'll ask the question. How many of you would sit in a, auditorium or a business setting and there's a speaker maybe several speakers and they're supposed to be motivational speakers okay and they're there for one reason and one reason only and I you the operative word is to motivate you in what area what in whatever area of your life you may need they are there to motivate you for some people it is to build them up for some people, it is to act as a force to push them forward. For some people, uh, it may uh, be the very thing that they need that day because they go through circumstances. Some may, may have never experienced hearing a motivational speaker. Uh, some motivational speakers speak from experience. They want to motivate you to understand uh, what they're relaying. Some may tell their uh give their information in a in a story form so it's more relatable or they give uh, different scenarios so it's relatable to us but what if you went to a event of such and 
the motivational speaker, you all hyped up, ready to go. Everybody, you know, some people come in with their pen and paper because they don't want to pay for the um, <laughs> for the DVD or the or the um, the link that they may send you. But you have an expectation to hear something and to receive it. It is value. You've paid for something to hear and receive that's going to motivate you and push you forward. Can you see those words? Absolutely not. They're invisible, but they have force and they have power. Perhaps to even change the trajectory of your life, to change your thinking, to change your posture. For some of us, it might be a Three, th- or 380 turn or 360 or 390. Some of us, it just might be a slight turn. But whatever it is, you're there for purpose. And what if you got to that space and that event and the person, everything that they said, every word that came out of their mouth, it had energy to it. It had power but it may not have been edifying. It was negative. And people just sat there and absorbed that. So your spirit now has taken something in that was never subscribed to it anyway. It was not supposed to be misused that way. So now your spirit has been misused by the words that were spoken. And it has an an effect for some, an immediate effect for some others. um, It may not affect you till later on. It could be short term, long term. Have you ever watched a person walk down the street or standing at a bus stop and you're just seeing them mouthing? Well, usually they're listening to words. They're listening to music. And have you ever seen them just jumping around? Foiling their arms up in the air. Ah, You know, it could be a rap song. It could be a rock and roll song. Heavy metal. We don't know. But what we know is we see the effect of it. The power of the words are vibrating in their ear, in their ear gate. And it is affecting their spirit man to react, to jump up and down, to move their body around. To make them think that they're really rappers because their hands are all over the place. Or they're real, they are really a a great singer because of their body uh, is open, their arms are wide open as though they're singing with power. And when we listen to those words, some of those words are negative. So we see this, you experience this in this setting. And for some of us, we'll just sit there because we're polite or we paid our money. We may have come with someone else and that's our only way to get get back to where we were going, where we came from. But the point I'm making is, is that the instant that those words are released, it affects us. There is a visceral effect that we have when negative words or powerless words are spoken to us, in us, or over us. So that is why we must be careful of not only what we say, but allowing others to speak in us, speak into our lives with words, because words have power. Words have power. They begin to produce what God intends them to produce. Mm -hmm. Words begin to produce what God intends them to produce. So if you are in a ministry or if you're one of the leaders or even in your home, if you have um, an influence, any influence, and you know God's word, um, you want to produce 
whatever is in you, whatever you say, you want that to produce what God intends for it to. You want to produce good. You want to have good fruit coming out of your mouth. Good words. They began to produce what God intends them to produce. That I, That's just powerful because they heard a powerful and invisible force word. They heard it. They received it and they believed it. And now they're producing what God intended them to produce. What are you producing from your words? What are your words producing in your children? I believe sometimes as adults and parents, we forget that our words sometimes can stun our children. It can have an adverse effect on them. It may not be intentional. Usually it's not. So we always have, we should always go back and check ourselves. And if we, if the spirit of God lives in you, um, let me say this first. We are all born with a godly conscience of right and wrong. So wherever you are with that, in that space, you know, if you said something to your child that could have cut them with your words, maybe even change how they think and perceive themselves with your words. So you need to go back and correct that so that they don't produce what you put in them. There's nothing worse than a parent saying, what did you, why are you repeating that? What did you hear that from? You or my father or my brother or my grandmother, somebody of influence that they are around on a regular basis. They've heard it. And so they think it's okay for them to repeat it. There's nothing more embarrassing for a parent or a family to have a child uh, cursing, especially in public, uh, especially little children. They don't know. You have, hey, we have to train them right. The Bible says train up a child in the way you should go and he will not depart from it. What that really means is what that's really talking about is whatever their gift is, what their natural gift is, you want to make sure that they train, you want to make sure that they, that they are equipped and you develop that natural gift as well as their spiritual gift. So whatever their, whatever, whatever it is. So you want to, you, you, we don't want to kill it with our words. We want to make sure that we, um, are producing the very thing that God set out for us to produce. Amen. Man, I, this is so good. It's, it's like we I can't give you enough of it in a short period of time, but I pray and hope that you are receiving something from this um, as we continue uh, to, to finish up our series and, and get ready to go into another series that God is giving us. So more things about the power of words. And we'll, some of these scriptures we had already touched on prior to, but we'll go over them. We will go over them again in the event that you missed them. Or maybe I was talking a little too fast that day and you missed it. You can always always you can also always go back to our YouTube page or our Facebook page and find the scriptures as well. Proverbs 18, 21, death is death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Ooh, what fruit do you want to eat? I want to eat fruit with life in it. I don't want to eat no peach that's sour, out of season. I don't want to eat a peach like that. I don't want to eat an apple that's full of worms because it's not going to benefit me. It's not, not beneficial. And I don't even want to have it on my tongue. Can you imagine a, a worm crawling on your tongue? Yeah. That's what happens when we say things out of our mouths that come across our tongues. It's like a worm. 
not just one worm, maybe imagine a couple of worms crawling in your mouth. You trying to spit them out. You can't spit them out fast enough. Mm -hmm. That's how our words are sometimes. That's probably why when we were children, our parents would tell us, I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. And those of us who have experienced that knows it's not a great, it doesn't taste great. And sometimes you can't get rid of the taste for days and your, your tongue may be numb and, and it feels sticky and soapy all the time. Yeah. Because of the words that come out of our mouth. Ephesians 4, 29. And I'm reading out of the this uh, out of the ESV translation. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up. As, as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Mm. That, let no corrupt talking come out of your mouth. But only such as is good for, for what? For building up. For building up as it fits the occasion. So whatever the occasion is, you want to build it up. That it may give grace to those who hear it. So I, even as I speak to you now, my prayer is that you're receiving my words with grace. That you hear grace in this lesson, in this series. That you hear grace in my spirit, in my heart. For you, for those who hear it, you would. I would hope that you wouldn't sit here and listen to me say, um, use words that are harsh and uncomplimentary. Uh, well, some people would sit there, but I don't want you to. That's not of God. That's a corrupt spirit. It says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth. Gossip. Backbiting. Clicks, oh, clicks are part of power word of power of words because you can only be a part of us if you talk like us, if you walk like us, and clicks are always talking. They never stop talking. They always talk about something, someone, or somebody's. And everybody is against the cliques. Cliques are another form of uh, a larger scale bully. Yeah, their words are not great. They have to tear down someone else to build themselves up. Mm -hmm. mm. Matthew 12, 36. I tell you on the day of judgment, people will... Give an account for every careless word they speak. So now for those who you, for those of you who you may think, uh, God doesn't care about what I say. It doesn't matter. I don't have to apologize. They said it to me first. So I just responded. They know who I am. I mean, you know, I am who I am. They should expect it. No, no, no. God's telling you uh, right here. Matthew 12, 36, I tell you on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. Now, this is interesting because it says people. That is everybody. He didn't isolate it. He didn't say my believers. He didn't say my sheep. Nope. He said people. He didn't say uh brown people. He didn't say Caucasian people. He didn't say Hispanic people. He didn't say this tribe, the tribe of Dan or the tribe of Judah. Or No, he didn't. No. He said people. People. So all of y'all who have a word tongue problem and I'm not talking about speaking in our heavenly language. I'm talking about people who you give an account for every careless word. So every careless word that you say without repentance, 
it's going to be judged. It's going to be judged. It's going to be judged. Oh, yeah. Even something you said 10, 12, 13 years ago, you could be a totally different person. If you have not repented from that, God is going to judge the words that you said. Because some of us put a period, a comma, and another period on what we say, because we want you to understand what I want you to understand and where I'm coming from. I want you to feel the energy of these words. I want you to feel the force of these words. But you're going to be held accountable for it. He's going to judge people. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 16, 24. Gracious words are like a honeycomb. Sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Ooh, Isn't that romantic? That's poetry. You ever want to read a good poet, a, a book of poet, a book of poetry, Song of Solomon and a book of Proverbs. I digress for a minute, but <laughs> Proverbs 16, 24, I will read it again. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Oh, now he didn't give you a remedy how to get your body healthy, how to stay sweet and everything. Get you some honeycomb. Ah, it's gracious. The words are gracious. Like, and that's something that he compares a, uh, the gracious words to a honeycomb. Because you ever saw a honeycomb, really examined it. It's very intricate and it, the architect in them are beautiful. But it's sweet. It's compared to the sweetness of a honeycomb and to your soul. So that means your soul is sweet too. He wants your soul to be sweet. And it's not only is good for your soul, but guess what? It's healthy for your body. It's healthy for your body. Maybe, you know, get rid of some sinus issues with a little honey on there. Mm -hmm. It's good for your body. It's good for the digestive system. It's good. It's good. It's good. It brings health to your body. You want that spring body, that summer body? Pow, pow. Mm. Get you some honey. Use gracious words. Some of us, and I'm, I'm just acting silly, but some of us uh, are seeking to have a mate. Some of us want, you know, to start dating seriously, really to marriage. Um, how are you going to do that if you can't speak gracious words to that person? And your words have, have sweetness to like a honeycomb. If you're married, why would you not speak sweetness to your to your mate? So it's good for their body, it's good for their soul. If you love them, we should speak gracious words into them and on them, even to our children. Even to our children, even to yourself. Even to yourself. You know what will happen when you get in God's presence to pray? Oh, my God, you'll be so sweet because his presence is sweet. His presence is sweet. It will change your heart. It will change your mind. All the crazy stuff, the stinking thinking that we have. If you use some of these scriptures to apply it. You'll be surprised at how you come in God's presence in prayer and, and, and he will reveal you to you how sweet he is. I'm telling you firsthand. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 51. I'm sorry. Proverbs 15 and one. A soft word turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. You ever watched a program on TV like some of the YouTube videos where they have, you know, the different Karens and all of that. You might be watching it just out of fun, but I don't know if you ever notice sometimes you might have an, a jerk or knee jerk reaction, or you might find yourself tapping your hand a little bit more, mm, maybe gritting your teeth, even talking back to the TV. Why are you doing that? Why are you acting this way? Uh-huh. That is because harsh words have stirred up anger. Harsh behavior has stirred up anger. And then when someone comes along with a soft answer, you still want to stay angry, but you can't because they have a 
soft answer. They're using soft words, words of grace, words that will have honeycombs on it, words that will have honey from the honeycomb. Mm-hmm. Proverbs 21, 23, whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of T-R-O-U-B-L-E, trouble. Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. So that has so many layers. Number one is it's talking about gossiping. Number two, the phrase is, Keep your name off my mouth. Uh, no, keep your keep my name out of your mouth. <laughs> keep my name out your mouth. Mm, they didn't even know they were speaking a little scripture. They were trying to be all hood. But this is what this is saying. Whatever, whatever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. So if you if you monitor what 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 words come out of your mouth, it's going to keep you out of trouble. First your mouth and then your tongue. Because your mouth has to open so the tongue can move. And the brain has to tell the tongue what to say. And the brain and the soul has to agree with what you're going to say. And the spirit man is saying, don't say that. Get in line. Line up with me because I'm going to tell you the right thing. I'm going to tell you to speak words of graciousness. But no, sometimes the, the, the soul and the and the man, the, the physical man, they want to go off and do their own thing. They want to have a separate conversation. Mm -hmm. We're, we are winding up. And I do just want to continue to encourage you to keep God first in everything that you do. In everything that you say. And remember, words have power. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Think about that. Thank you for joining Kava Ministries tonight. Uh, we would like for you to continue to support us. By liking, share, and subscribing, of course. And also, if you uh, find it in your heart to give, donate. Um, if you like to give, you can at Cash App at Kava Ministries. Cash App, dollar sign Kava Ministries with a capital K. So I'll spell it out. Dollar sign K-A-V-A-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-E-S. Um, any donation that you give to this ministry goes back into the ministry. And uh, we also like to support our community. So, again, we would appreciate any donations. Um, again, like, share, subscribe, tell somebody. Thursday night podcast with Kava Ministries. We are doing some fantastic things for the kingdom. We are preparing to do another a new series. Uh, it is called the Tamar Experience. You will hear more about it. If you want to participate, you will uh, we'll put out information so that you can be a participant in this project. It is going to be it's it's going to be something uh special, something spectacular, the Tamar experience. Again, this is uh Kava Ministries. We thank you so much for joining us. See you next Thursday. Peace and blessings.